Up next is Cindy Mullins, Community Manager from Ambassador Labs, talking about why community is so important and explaining why they wanted to double down on their community efforts by donating their project to the CNCF. She'll share some of the lessons learned in growing the community from zero to thousands of active users. Hi, everybody. My name is Cindy Mullins, and I'm the Community Manager at Ambassador Labs. Ambassador Labs is the home of the API Gateway known as Emissary Ingress, which has been accepted as a CNCF incubation project. My role as a community manager is to assist our community with technical as well as educational support. So in my role, I help to grow the community by creating a positive atmosphere that fosters learning and knowledge sharing. We currently have over 6,000 users and managing a community of that size, as I'm sure you're, you, you're all well aware, can become rather challenging. So I'm really excited today to have the opportunity to talk about how we meet the needs of our members and how we manage the community as it grows. So to start, I'd like to touch briefly on Emissary Ingress, talk a little bit about its history and how the community has driven this project and been instrumental to its success. I'll explain our community pillars of outreach and welcoming, of education and recognition, as well as talk about how we do tech support. The tech support piece is, I think, the key point of my presentation today, as I believe we have a slightly unique approach to this, so I'm excited to share how it works for us. And lastly, I'll explain our forward-looking collaboration with the CNCF. So what is Emissary Ingress? Emissary Ingress is an open source Kubernetes native API gateway and ingress controller that is built on Envoy. It lets you send traffic to your Kubernetes services. And because it's built on Envoy, it enables sophisticated traffic management capabilities like load balancing, circuit breakers, rate limits, and automatic retries. Emissary Ingress uses a declarative self-service model that's built on CRDs Kubernetes custom resource definitions, which enables continuous delivery workflows. And it also has ecosystem integration with other tools in the cloud native community like Prometheus, Linkerd, and others. So you can do things like observability, distributed tracing, and service, service mesh solutions. So since the early days of Emissary Ingress, we've come a long way in the four plus years. Um, Emissary Ingress really started off as a kind of an experiment. In uh, January of 2017, Matt Klein gave a talk on Envoy at the Microservices Practitioner Summit, and that really acted as a trigger for us in this technology space. So our engineering team, which was very small at that time, started thinking about how we could harness the power of Envoy proxy and create a more human and understandable approach to deployment in order to extrapolate away some of the complexity of Envoy configuration. Emissary Ingress was first released publicly in March of 2017. And at that time, it totaled just 148 commits and about 800, <clears throat> excuse me, 800 lines of Python code. <laughs> but it pretty quickly got people's attention as an Envoy-based API gateway. And then in 2018, we started getting recognition from some of our peers. So Alex Gervais, who was at AppDirect at that time, wrote a blog post about how they'd adopted um, the Ambassador API Gateway, which is the original name of Emissary Ingress. And Alex also gave uh, talks at a couple of conferences in Montreal and Seattle. And he also became our first open source contributor. <laughs> so shortly after that, Alex uh, actually ended up joining DataWire, and he is now a principal engineer at the company, uh, which is now called Ambassador Labs today. So as we've grown, um, Emissary Ingress has really come a long way, and it now supports a wide range of use cases, including load balancing, authentication, and observability. It's been adopted by thousands of organizations, many of whom are using it uh, in production, including AppDirect, uh, but also Ticketmaster, Chick-fil-A, OneFootball, and many others. We released version 1.0 in January of 2020, and Emissary Ingress was adopted by the CNCF as an incubation project in April of this year. 
We also have a version 2.0 coming out soon. It is currently in developer preview. And over time, our GitHub stars have increased. The number of contributors uh, has also increased. We have now 3,800 pull requests. And as I mentioned before, 6,000 members uh, in our Slack community, in our open source channels. So with all this growth, we've entered a new phase, and I'm sure that others can appreciate that there are some challenges with managing a community of this size. So the first challenge is how do we meet the needs, like particularly how do we respond to the technical questions of our users in a timely way? We also want to get our users connected with us and with each other so that they feel at home in this community. And then lastly, uh, one goal is that we want to help our users learn more about Kubernetes technologies and become more effective in using them and be able to help others do the same. So how do we do that? As the community manager, I often think of myself as kind of an air traffic controller. <laughs> um, so there's a lot of users kind of coming into our channels. They're all headed somewhere. They're all looking for directions. And it's my job to guide them to whatever resources they are looking for. So the first focus of mine is to create a welcoming environment. So within a few days to a week or so, maybe 10 days of joining our community, I reach out to our users to welcome them to our Slack channels. I ask them, hey, how are things going? Uh, are you looking for something in particular? Is there any way I can help? And we've experimented with different approaches to this, but the one that works best is like what I just said, just very short, sweet, and just open-ended. We get a high number of responses to this type of outreach, and users will often even comment that they appreciate that human touch. So what's really key with this is that we know right away if there's something that they are looking for, or if there's something that we need to clarify for a new user. And so this really helps us establish engagement. We've also discovered that it's important to not let too much time pass between when a user joins the channel and when we do this outreach. So I have made that mistake as well. And typically we find that if you don't establish that, content, that uh, connection while users are actively looking for information or support, it's likely that you will lose that opportunity to connect with them. Another focus of ours is on education. So to further that goal, this past summer, we created a 12-week educational course called the Summer of Kubernetes, and that attracted a lot of new users to our channels. So the course covered Kubernetes technologies that new users need to learn about and practice, and we arranged that content into three modules, code, ship, and run. We're now working on transitioning this material into an evergreen learning center where both new and experienced users can get hands-on tutorials to try out and experiment with different Kubernetes technologies and tools. And our last focus is really on recognition. So for example, when users raise GitHub issues for Emissary Ingress, or when they post PRs that contribute to product releases, we make sure to credit them for that assist. So in our release announcement, we will give them a shout out we will link uh, to their Slack ID, mention them by name. Um, and similarly, if users respond to other users' questions in the channels, we make an effort to thank them. We put an emoji on that response, like hands up, <laughs> hands raised, something like this. Um, and I'll often reach out uh, to our users with a personalized uh, DM to thank them for helping others and also to get to know them a little bit so uh, we understand you know, more about who these users are. Um, so these are small things that take a little bit of effort to put in place, but over time they become a natural part of user engagement and over the long term they really have a positive impact. So I mentioned I was going to talk about tech support and as I said, it's probably the most time consuming challenge that we face is responding to users questions about the technology and how they can use it. So in my role as community manager, I actually act as our first line tech support person. And I will be the first to admit that I'm not really qualified <laughs> to do this. And honestly, it scared me at first to be in this role. But the system that we have works because I get the full backing of our tech support team. So what we do is I have a daily 25 minute check-in with the tech support team 
where I can ask any questions in the channel that haven't yet been answered. And I get advice from our tech support staff as to how I should respond. So this turns out to be a pretty efficient use of resources for us because with the answers I get in these short sessions, I can then go back and address you know, a number of user questions. I can send them a relevant page in our docs. I can point them to a GitHub issue. I can explain in more detail how something works, or I can ask for clarification or more info from that user. So the advantage with this is that the user's question gets a response right away. And also because the tech support team doesn't need to field all of the questions in the channel, they get to be selective about what threads they want to engage on. If those users that I've responded to come back with a follow-up question, then I can monitor those responses. I can put them on the docket for the next day's meeting, and I can follow those up and get more resource from our tech support team as I need. With this approach, we can turn around most questions on the same day or by the next day, and we can follow up on user responses quickly as well. By meeting every day, these user questions are fresh in our minds, so it's fairly easy to pick up uh, the next day and address those follow-up questions and just keep moving the ball forward. And sometimes I will ask a user to try something, like to run a curl command or to send us a log, and once they do that, I can also ping that into our internal community tech support channel, and I can ask our tech support team, hey, so I got this response, what's the next thing we can try, what else can we do, and they can give me advice on next steps. Another advantage of having these daily check-ins is that it serves as a training arena for our newer tech support staff. So they get to hear about issues raised by the community, which makes them more aware of some of the common questions that come up. And along with me, they also learn how to respond to different types of queries, including when and how to ask for more information from our users so that we can better understand uh, those use cases. And lastly, the advantage of this is that the whole tech team becomes aware of community issues and concerns. So if the same question comes up again and again, we can try to, we realize that we need to address the root cause. Um, similarly, some questions will require testing or even reproducing certain user scenarios. So often one of our tech support staff will take that on and work on that task and then report back on what they found, which is a useful um, training exercise as well. The other part of the tech support piece is, I guess, what I would refer to as escalation. So if we find that we have an issue that is persistent or it's something that we can't address ourselves, I can escalate that to an internal engineering channel to get more clarification. Now this is especially useful if we notice something that we suspect is a regression because we can flag that to engineering quickly and have them check it out. Uh, similarly, if there is a document, um, for example, that is unclear or a situation that, uh, you know, repeatedly causes confusion for our users, I can escalate that internally to our friction channel where the folks who understand that best can, can kind of swarm on finding a suitable solution. Um, another scenario is sometimes users will ask in our open source channels for a new feature that they would like to have. So if they do, then I usually reach out to them to ask, hey, are you able to contribute some code or maybe some research to that? And if they can, then I can refer them to one of our dev channels in our OSS Slack and an engineer will help them get started there with a pull request. Um, if a user bumps into a known issue, I will often ask them to plus one on an existing GitHub issue so we know how and who that is impacting. Or if they come across a new issue entirely, I will usually ask them to create a GitHub issue so that we have a record of it. And then engineering can review those and adopt them into future development cycles. And the last way that I provide tech support is to connect our users with each other. So if we have a user who's trying to add custom functionality to Emissary, like creating their own filter, for example, I will you know, sometimes reach out to an existing super user who I know has done that exact thing. And I try to put them in touch with each other. So our more experienced users are happy to help and it encourages the new users because they get some good advice that points them in the right direction. 
So what are some of the lessons that we have learned in this approach? I would say that one of the key takeaways is that you need to welcome new joiners to your community right away. So when people come to the channels, they're there for a reason, and it's my job to figure out what that reason is. So I ask them what they're looking for, and I need to do that pretty quickly. Otherwise, you know, they might move on, and I will miss that opportunity uh, to learn why they joined and even to know if they were successful in finding what they were looking for. The second uh, important lesson, I think, is that it is better to respond quickly with a partial answer rather than to wait until you have a perfect answer or to not respond at all because you don't have a perfect answer and then the conversation lags. People really appreciate being acknowledged. And even if you don't have a complete answer, oftentimes whatever you can share at that moment is enough to get them past that current hurdle. And very often users will actually figure out their own issue. Um, but if we are responsive from our side, what happens is that they will feel supported and they will post their discovery. So they will let us know what the issue was, what, how they fixed it, and then that benefits us and it also benefits other users who can, who can see that thread as well. So if we reach out to users, they're more engaged. If we don't reach out to users, they're much less likely to tell us about the problems they're having or to tell us the solutions when they do find them. And the other lesson I would say is that our community members are a great source of knowledge. So they are deploying Emissary Ingress in many different environments. They are testing it and using it so they can actually speak to use cases and experiences that we can't, frankly. So when community members respond to questions from other users, I do try to recognize that. And like I said, add an emoji or a comment to show that we appreciate it. The more knowledge sharing that we have going on, the better. So I do what I can to keep that positive vibe going. So I did want to mention just some of the benefits of donating to the CNCF. Um, Emissary Ingress is, as I mentioned, an open source solution. So making it fully available to developers for adoption and expansion is really important to us. Joining CNCF has opened up Emissary Ingress to more users, to more contributors. It also helps advance the North-South use case for Envoy Proxy, and it contributes to defining those best practices for Ingress in Kubernetes. That increased visibility also means that more users recognize the project within the cloud native community, and then they come and they join our channels, which helps us to grow our community too. So we are very excited to partner with the CNCF and we look forward to future collaborations. Oops. Right, so, sorry, <laughs> I think I advanced one slide too many there. So just to recap uh, the, the points of my talk, Emissary Ingress is a Kubernetes native API gateway that is built on Envoy Proxy. Uh, we really value our community. It has been a driving force in this project from the beginning, and we work hard to keep our community engaged and to help them grow alongside of us. Our community pillars are outreach and welcome, education, and recognition. And we really try to focus on a good streamlined approach to tech support because being timely with that tech support piece can really make or break a community. And as I said, it's better to respond with a partial answer and be helpful and be engaging and be encouraging than it is to let questions lag or to wait until you have a perfect answer. And then lastly, uh, the Emissary Ingress CNCF incubation donation is just the beginning of our collaboration and we are really looking forward to future development there. So thank you very much for listening. Um, you can join our Slack community and check out all of this for yourself. <laughs> uh, you can do that by joining us at a8r.io slash slack. Uh, we also encourage you to check out our repo on GitHub Emissary Ingress. And please do uh, drop by our website at getambassador.io for all our news and announcements. I will just mention that concurrent with KubeCon LA, we're also hosting our own Dev House event October 12th through 14th. And as I mentioned education, we are going to be presenting a recap of the Summer of Kubernetes course material in a four hour workshop. So two two hour hands-on sessions, and we'd love to have you join us there. 
Uh, if you have any questions for me, I'm happy to take those now or feel free to find me on the Ambassador Slack channel. Thank you. Thanks to Microsoft Azure and Equinix Metal for supporting us at the champion level. We also want to thank Red Hat and Slim.ai for funding us at our supporter level.